Hey, it's your travel agent, David, and today I am at Dover Air Force Base at the Air Mobility Command Museum. This place is phenomenal. They have dozens and dozens of different aircraft spanning several generations, different wars, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, the global war on terrorism. They even have the 9-11 memorial out here for Dover Air Force Base. When you go inside that hangar, they have several different exhibits for you to check out. We're going to go look at it now and see how awesome this museum really is. being in the army the air force was like our uber and if you don't believe me check it out you call we haul the military's uber
So behind me is a C5 Galaxy. This aircraft is so big, just you can't even tell how big it is in this picture. It can hold tanks, it can hold helicopters. You can take a six foot person and have them go like this in the engine and they won't even be able to touch the top of the engine from standing inside of it. It is ginormous. It is like the Cadillac of the Air Mobility Command. It is the biggest, sweetest airplane they've ever had. Like, look at that engine. Like, I actually stood in the engine and I couldn't even touch up the touch the top. And I'm like five, eight and a half. So it's just huge. So behind me is a KC-10. Okay, it is the Valero, the Quick Stop, the Wawa, the Royal Farms. It is the Shell gas station of the sky. Okay, right behind me right there, that boom will drop down and connect into aircraft and it will fill them up. So if you ever wonder why airplanes can fly for so long, that's one of the reasons why. So behind me is one of the original fuelers, if you will. If you look at this engine behind me, you see that right there? There's a hose. It would come in and it would connect into a spout that would come up. Like if you've ever seen an A6 intruder, they would come up with a fuel spout. That would connect into it. They would hook up and they would fill out of the fuel pot. So a big difference from this to that. So I'm standing at the back end of one of the first mass-produced refueling aircraft in the Air Force arsenal. Okay, We had the boom, just like in the KC-10. See the difference between that one and that one? They don't, they don't have that net that comes out. But you wonder how they fill it up? Well, the pilot is talking to the gas station attendant, if you will, right? There's an Air Force personnelist right there that is controlling the boom and trying to line it up and communicating with the pilot in that aircraft as they refuel. Now this aircraft was one of the first mass produced refuelers. It started being mass produced in the 1950s. Fortunately, they got rid of it because, well, it wasn't the most attractive aircraft in the Air Force arsenal. In fact, it looked like it went 10 rounds with the Russian from the Rocky movie. Am I wrong? I mean, Aero Medivac really became popular in the Korean War. If you've ever seen MASH, they had the two helicopters that were present in there. They would bring two casualties at a time. Well, with the implementation of jet aircraft, the Air Force was able to getting soldiers from say Vietnam into Tokyo or Germany to where they can get more stable uh, health care and that was probably one of the most inventions that they have done and they still use aircraft like this today. I am in a C-141B. These planes were set up with all types of different configurations and can be multitasked at any given time. Behind me it's already set up for a pallet the ramp would drop in the back and they would push all the pallets out and they would parachute all the way to the ground and they would fit all the way down there. Now, right behind me, you can see they've got it set up for litters. So they could also use it to medevac casualties. They could put vehicles in here, whatever they needed to do, whatever they needed to transport. The Air Force needed to move it. They would find a way. Now, behind me, some nice seats. Okay? These are like for the generals. Okay, where the normal soldiers sit, they sat on things like this. Very nice plush canvas with some nice harness backing in there. Super comfortable, especially when you were sitting on them for about nine to 10 hours. That was like the best. Just like on the C-141, the C-130 can be equipped to do the exact same thing. We can run pallets all the way through here and drop them out of the back. We can have parachuters jump out the sides. We can have them set up for litters and then transport. And I'll tell you, the funnest time I've ever had on a C-130 was in Afghanistan. Super short runway. 
don't even know how this aircraft landed. Wondered how we we're gonna take it off. They revved the engines up so much that as soon as they went forward, we all went <laughs> until we were way up. And then when we landed, we had to go spin around and corkscrew into the airport. So that was probably like the coolest thing I've ever done in a C-130, but uh, plenty of people would jump out of them and stuff like that. But it's a very versatile aircraft in the Air Force arsenal. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time together today at the AMC Museum at Dover Air Force Base, Delaware. Until next time, keep trying to reach out for your dreams and click off those tasks on your bucket list. I'll see you on our next journey.